What's going on everyone? So we don't have a real exciting video today, but as we keep moving forward with our travel off project, um, a lot of the big major mock-up is done. So I want to show a couple things that have got missed along the way that I didn't make a video out of because I didn't think they're going to turn out good or I didn't have time. They're not really major things, but I want to show you guys a few things that you've missed along the way. So let's get started. So probably the biggest or the main one is inside the travel law and shortly after I fractured my foot I actually uh, pulled a back muscle in the middle of the night I leaned up and stretched and pulled a back muscle but I was like walking like Igor the next day it was terrible it hurt really bad so I got out here and I was just sitting in it staring at it and I started thinking where am I where am I gonna put the radio or the AC controls so looking inside here, uh, kind of like the outside, I like having the modern stuff, but I want it to look like it's supposed to be there. And in my opinion, there's not a good solution to replace factory stuff. Now I know they make these radios that look nice and have good sound quality, but um, the couple of prices I've seen with them, I don't want to spend that much money. Um, I am going to do vintage air and None of their controls look good at all to me. So I started looking in here and I was like, well, what the hell could I do to make that work? So I started thinking about it and I'm not really big on center consoles. Um, I don't like big obnoxious ones, but I thought to myself, what if I could make one that kind of looked like it was supposed to be there, that I could hide the radio and the AC controls in. So let me show you what I came up with. Now, I didn't record this because, like I said, I was hurting that day. I thought I was just going to make some templates, uh, do a kind of first attempt thing, and it would fail, and it didn't. So, I didn't really think it would turn out good the first time. So, here's what I came up with. Now, the center console is still bigger than I want it to be, but in my opinion, that is going to look better and blend better than a modern radio or modern AC controls on that dash. You can see the bead rolls on the top and on the side to match the seat pan. If you remember, we added those there and even on the back toolboxes back that way. So all of that will kind of help tie it all together. So the center console, I wanted to keep it as low as possible for the cup holder area. I didn't have the cup holders when I built this. So you can see there's a little overhang of them here. Uh, this is as far forward as, as it has to be where this curve starts to drop. And the main part, the main body is built out of four pieces. So basically this side you see here, I cut out two of them. And then I cut this front piece and curved it to it. Uh, welded it and then I sat this piece on here welded it on the inside and bent it over tacked it along and then down the back so the top piece is one piece this front piece where it comes up and curves is one piece and then two side pieces after I got that done um, I don't like the way the radios look the AC controls look so I wanted a way to hide it so I thought I would try to build a lid now again this lid it's not perfect um, it don't sit down just perfect but you know I'm happy with it I've never built anything like this before so it was all new to me um, I could do a couple things different but I'm not going to with the way I was doing this so with putting this metal on here flat and then having to force it around this curve and tacking it on the inside it actually actually created this bow out here you can can see that wasn't intentional it's just because I didn't have a good way to roll this 
and get it shaped on there correctly. But the way it bowed, I kind of like um, the way it looks. So I used some eighth inch filler wire here and accented it all the way around for the top lid. And this piece was a little narrow, so actually wasn't as wide as the body. So doing that widens the lid overall where it matches pretty flush there and it accents that curve on the front. I like the way it looks. So this thing actually started shaping up better than I thought it was going to. So before I full welded this and all that, I hadn't even actually bead rolled this because like I said, I did not think it was gonna turn out good. So where I had tacked this around on the inside, I actually cut a couple tacks, bent this metal back flat, that way I could get this lid in the bead roller then and actually went backwards just so I could bead roll it and then reshaped it and tacked it again. Um, same thing on the sides. I did not bead roll this until it was all together because I didn't think it was gonna turn out good. So all the bead rolling was actually done on this thing after it was built. It did make it a pain in the butt to do it like that, but I was still able to squeeze it in there. To mount this thing, you can see I added uh, some quarter 20 with the crater maker right there. I just built these little L brackets and these will end up getting spot welded to the floor and there are nuts on the back side of them for that bolt to thread into. This little arm I built out of scrap. You can see those little bead rolled areas and what those are, I did not bead roll those. These are actually from leftover pieces from when we built Chris's car. The replacement inner rockers you get for one of those shoe boxes have those little areas on them and they're made out of 16 gauge. So I figured that was perfect to build this little arm out of. Right here on this piece, you can see what I'm talking about. So I had a bigger piece that I just cut out around that whole area to trim those down to. The hinge assembly was a pain in the butt. That's a piece of like 5 16 round rod that I drilled it and tapped it for a quarter 20. So that rod bolts to the lid on each side. You can also see that rod has washers. Those washers are tacked to the rod where they hold this in place, which is our main hinge. Back here on the back, this is just some half inch plate that I cut to shape, drilled the hole through it for that 5 16 rod, and I drilled and tapped it for a quarter 20. And I'm trying to be careful because none of this stuff's actually mounted, but you can see the quarter 20s down there that go through the back to bolt that hinge to it. And you can see how those little L brackets work there. So when we're sitting in here, this is pretty much what it'll look like. I'll be able to, when I'm driving, uh, just flip that up, lock it with that little arm, and I have my radio right there. The AC controls will be up here. And if I have room, I'm actually gonna add some little USB charging ports. That way, when we go on our road trips and everything, I can keep my phone charged or her phone. Uh, just make it where it's really usable. And when we get where we're going, we can hide all that ugliness just like that right there. So I'm gonna get this thing in some primer today, which is why I'm wanting to show it now because it looks bitching in metal. Uh, but I'm not actually gonna weld this thing in or those little brackets down there until everything's going together for good because there's still a lot of wiring that has to go up underneath the dash. Uh, gotta do the AC, heat, all that kind of stuff. And as much as I want to crawl around in here and have those little L brackets poke me in the back, uh, I think I'll just wait. Now, speaking of stuff underneath the dash, that brings us to the next thing that we missed. And that was building brackets to be able to mount uh, the vintage air unit. So we'll still do a video about air conditioning. So don't worry about that. Um, basically, I wanted to get an idea of where my... Uh, heater hoses, air conditioning hoses, and all that was gonna go through the firewall to start to get me a game plan up there. Um, local to me, I have a buddy who has a shop and he keeps the different mock-up units because they do a lot of vintage air. So I just got a hold of him and asked him if I could borrow the mock-up unit for the one that I'm gonna end up putting in here. Now here's the main bracket that I built. And most of the time, you don't even have to build these. Technically, it should come with brackets and then you gotta make those brackets attached to your firewall. But somebody 
didn't return the brackets to him. He didn't have them. I told him no big deal. I would just build some. So this bracket right here will bolt to the back of the air conditioning and heat unit. And then these holes right here will get bolted to the firewall. So like I said, you usually don't even have to worry about building something like this. But after I built it, already showing my front bracket there. That's supposed to be a surprise. After I built that, you can see down here kinda, those are just chunks of 3 8 plate that I cut in little squares and I drilled them and I tapped them. There's one there, up there, up there, and down there again. I know those little chunks are ugly, but where this thing bolts, you can barely see them. And once everything's in, you won't be able to see them. So this will go up there. They will thread into those little plates and doing it that way, no bolts have to actually go through the firewall where we don't have to see them on the other side, which is good because we want a clean engine bay. So next is this little bracket and basically on the front of your vintage air units, there's three bolt holes. So I built a piece of sheet metal that can reach all of them. Now area of this will still have to be cut out where some wires go through, but we'll do that in the future. And I kicked a leg off of this that bends along the shape of it. And this goes over to the top of the kick panel area there. You can see that nut cert. Then I welded that little arm to it, which is going to go up. And there's another square there that's uh, welded. So hopefully you can see that. So I actually kept the unit dropped down pretty low. I probably could have tucked it up a little higher, but I didn't want to make everything too compact. There's plenty of foot room over there. So I'll add some pictures now where you can see how it looks bolted in. And again, with the, uh, these bead rolls, they'll kind of match everything that's going on and hopefully tie everything together. So I know I'm talking your ear off about all that sheet metal stuff in there. I just want to say real quick that the center console that bracket for the air conditioning, the seat pans, all those areas are gonna end up getting painted this factory blue. And I think it'll really bring everything together. Um, depending on what I can find or if I think it looks good to lift the lid of that center console, I may even add one of those factory international knobs and that'll kind of help tie it all together as well. So that's enough about that stuff. Now we need to roll underneath this thing. So underneath here, you'll notice two things. Obviously that bright white drive shaft that's in here. We do have a drive shaft now. And that cross member back there. Now you can see that cross member right there. There's a little bit of clearance, but this one's gonna have to come out as well. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit of more, more about both of those now. So that cross member, I drilled the rivets, got the old one out of there. Where that back one is, it's going directly between our outside four link brackets. So that's gonna really stiffen the frame there, which is good because these pieces, they full uh, interlock into the shape of the frame where it can get full welded around there. The cross member itself is two by two, 11 gauge. So that sits across there and then two pieces of this cap it in and a piece of strap goes down across this front. Um, the day I did that one, my oldest got out here and she was actually working with me. She was marking these out as she was marking, I was cutting. Um, as I was finishing cutting, she was wire wheeling them, getting ready for me to be able to weld them. So we just stayed rocking and rolling and built all these pieces. I'll obviously have to build another one to replace the other one that's underneath there, but we're gonna wait and do that till when the body's off. So you will get to see one of those in the future. Now the drive shaft, that's from Southwest Speed, and I want to give those guys a huge shout out because I called them at 445 on a Tuesday evening. I know that's when I called was 445. I talked to the gentleman on the phone for a little bit. He was very patient with me, let me get out here, take the measurements that he asked on the phone and everything, and we, uh, I got him the measurements he needed. We ran my card right there on the phone for a grand total of $220 with some change. Now that comes your drive shaft, both U-joints installed. You do have to install the slip yoke, but it comes with the slip yoke. So that was 
everything I needed, tax, shipping, everything. They got here the next day before lunch. It was like 11.57 and the UPS man come pulling up. Now they're in Arkansas, I'm in Oklahoma. I realize I'm close, but even calling at 4.45 that day, talking to him on the phone for 10 minutes, after we got done doing everything, he said, hey, we're still gonna get that thing shipped out today. You should see it tomorrow. And I did by lunchtime. So that's pretty impressive. The price is impressive. I don't know if you have a local drive shaft person, but going and having a drive shaft built is not exactly the cheapest thing either. So overall, I think it's a good deal. Southwest, Southwest Speed, I'm giving them a shout out. <laughs> I forgot their name. Uh, I'll put their name where you can find them down below. But I actually forgot until I started making this video was the one day I did mount the gas pedal. That's a factory gas pedal. And it was a little tricky because there was a nut kind of like that that comes on the factor, factory firewall. And it's kind of right back there, it's hard to see. So I had to drill a hole back there and waller it out where it can clear that. And then this tab over here used to drop down here. So I cut that tab off, just drilled a new hole there and put a bolt through there. And then I just welded that tab off over there. And because I'd cut off so much, this bracket that still comes up, it holds your spring right here for your tension on this thing, since this is drive-by wire. And uh, it was kind of flimsy. So I just cut a little piece of eighth inch and added a little gusset in there. Nothing, uh, Real special. All I did, nothing real special. Um, I got this as close as I could on our Yukon. I went and put my hand on the brake pedal, and the gas pedal was about a hand width apart, and it was down. I think it was actually a little bit further down than this one, but this is just how mine fit up. Either way, it's still super comfortable. It goes all the way till it bottoms out. Uh, so we should be good to go with that. Lastly, if you've seen the filler neck video, you know I moved the factory filler from the front fender back here. And to do that, I had to cut it out right here. So I cut a square out right there and all I did was cut a piece of 18 gauge and I shaped it in my English wheel because there's actually a lot of, uh, it don't look like it, but there's a lot going on in that little area right there. This has a lot more curve than it has back here. Now this kind of has a little reverse to it right there. So I got it shaped up pretty good where really I can't feel it other than down at the bottom. I got off a little bit down there, but overall it turned out pretty good. The fake patina did not turn out pretty good. It looks all right in this video right now from what I can tell, but in person, I don't like it. When I mix up some of this blue paint, I'm gonna try to just actually touch up this whole area all the way up to right here and get it buffed out with the rest of it. Well, I keep going around this thing and realizing there's more stuff than I thought. This uh, cowl up here, the one day, I cut a piece of 18 gauge, the shape of it, kind of shaped it on the English wheel a little bit to match. I painted it a bunch of different colors of brown and black and red to kind of make it blend a little bit like rust. And I shoved it up in there and welded it along there. So whenever this piece gets installed for good, basically I just plan on seam sealing it back along there and hopefully keep all the water and debris out. Well, that's it for these little updates, things we've missed. Um, it was actually more than I realized, except those have been spanned out over a good couple of months now. So it just finally all added up since we're getting closer to the end. I do wish I could have made a video out of the center console. I think it would have made a cool video, but everything else, you didn't really miss anything special. They were very quick jobs and easy. So thanks for watching. I know this is kind of boring. Um, if you're new to the channel, please check out some of the videos where we actually work on the travel law. If you always come back, thank you guys once again for coming and watching my channel. If you want to help me out, all you got to do is drop a comment down below, like the video, share, subscribe. All those things help me. So I always appreciate it when you guys do that. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Putin's Fab Shop. And I'll see you guys in the next video. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project.
I'll see you guys next time.